technical session moderated by the president of the Nigerian Chamber of Shipping, Alhaji Aminu Umar. During this session, the managing director of NLNG Shipping and Marine Services Limited, Mr. Abdul Kadri Ahmed, discussed strategies for mitigating greenhouse gas emissions in shipping. We took a survey in my one of our companies, and uh, I got a report two days ago. Almost 50 percent of the office people want work-life balance. Work-life balance. I said, "What is this?" He said, "Oh, they say they want to work three days in a week." I said, "No, I don't think it's allowed in Nigeria." But then, let's see. <laughs> but so maybe it's done somewhere. But I don't think it's here in Nigeria. It's something. But this is what we are. The world has changed to, and technology have to change with it. So technology is already there that you can, people can work from home, people can uh, be able to connect. But I, we think uh, we're seeing those changes happening, and today now is at a very fast lane. Part of what we do is how do we manage that, get full advantage of technology, and then manage the impact on our seafarers. Um, safety um, borders on sustainability. And one area of sustainability is really around uh, carbon emission. And shipping is a major contributor. Shipping contributes, basically, um, shipping as, a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as an industry moves 90% of the world's goods and, uh, globally. And it contributes almost 3% of greenhouse gas emissions. So there is a concerted effort aimed at ensuring that shipping is able to not just simply recognize that, but equally come up with mitigations to ensure that we are able to reduce uh, greenhouse gas emission. The question is, why is we are developing these modern vessels? Is there a plan to train our younger seafarers to be able to operate these vessels? You are quite right. I think clearly, globally, there is a dearth of skilled and qualified manpower, and it's going to get worse. The changes we're seeing in terms of technology, the changes we're seeing in terms of operations require us to focus on retraining and adapting our curriculum in our maritime academies. There's no two way about it. And I know IMO also is looking at that from the point of view of the STCW. Issues concerning the safety of seafarers, marine autonomous vessels, and emerging regulations for fishing activities were also discussed during the technical session. We have lots of projects, autonomous projects kicking off uh, crewless cargo, um, offshore power banks for remote operation of um, vessels. So the focus now, or most of the energy, is geared towards cargo and uh, seismic vessels. If we look at the maturity of the market segments, we have the cargo vessels for coastal trade, being the highest matured, um, that we also have intercontinental. We have survey vessels, offshore is uh, the most matured. For the ferry boats, we have coastal, which is more mat most matured. Then the small craft, both inland and coastal. We all know what the fishing industry contributes to Nigerian economy in terms of employment, food security, and economic growth. So there's need for us to look at the safety that brings to the fishing vessels. My intervention is only about um, energy efficiency and the transition. Um, we thank the government now that uh, because of the price of uh, uh, petrol, diesel, and all this and so forth, uh, there's a conversion uh, uh, program from petrol to CNG. So, uh, is there any program uh, either from NIMASA or NIWA on also conversion of some of these petrol engines to, to, to CNG? Yeah, I think more of uh, NIWA on when it comes to inland boats. I think it's more NIWA that is the regulatory agency there. But uh, NIMASA is for the ships, and, and for us, uh, I think the ships have already are already working based on convention of IMO, which already the our engines are already changing. We have moved from a low sulfur bunker now to eco engines, and now you can hear the latest 
engines in the process. Technological demands are coming from the first world countries and I think it's very important for us to be strategic in partnering with them because most of them also have uh, training institutions and they're already preparing the future of their seafarers. So I think we can key into that by partnering with them because really shipping is a global business and if we want to position our seafarers strategically for the global trade, then we should think about partnering.